Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. And, and, and I would like to thank Jordan and Brett for organizing this initiative. I think um, it's a really excellent uh, idea. Um, I would like to learn more about what other people's best students put out and even uh, my colleagues uh, uh, are doing. I mean, uh, we don't get a lot of time to learn and listen to um, what other people are doing. And I think this is an excellent initiative uh, in a formal way um, to share uh, what we are doing and maybe stimulate some uh, ideas for the future. But the way that our presentation works uh, is that I won't be staying here and uh, talking throughout uh, the time. I will just give an introduction of my group. And then after that, uh, representative of uh, different cluster of uh, research components of the group will be presenting. We won't be having everyone to present uh, because some of us are not here. They are away from meetings and, uh, and also it may, uh, it may be uh, Taking a lot too, too much time to cover and what this work. So, it will be with representative coverage of giving a general uh, coverage of what uh, the artists are doing. So, the group that uh, I'm a principal investigator on uh, is a Changing Ocean Research Unit or CRU. Uh, our mission is to improve understanding of the past, current, and future responses in wind ecosystems and fisheries. To global change, and a lot of focus is on climate change. But it also include uh, interactions with other human uh, activities such as fishing, pollution, um, and then uh, we don't need to do science. We are hoping to uh, connect our science to policy. So another ambition is to explore use the science to explore inform policy relevant solutions at both local and global scales uh, to improve human well-being as well as to encourage sustainable use of ocean resources. And the strategy that we, we, we do that is there are three main kind of work that we do in order to achieve that mission. The first one is to use big data sets, so we integrate multidisciplinary database, uh, and then uh, that includes information and knowledge across different spatial scale or organization scale, as well as different domains, from social science to, um, to natural science and oceanography. We also apply and develop models and scenarios to analyze these data sets in order to understand the dynamics of the changing ocean and the ecosystem. And uh, finally, we facilitate what we call our <coughs> sample quiet passations of knowledge and data so that we hope that other people can learn from what we do from the database and the data set, not only for our group or not only for scientists, but also for the broader society uh, in order to inform policy uh, and uh, advise solutions. And um, the way that our group functions is that it is a uh, group by an uh, overarching umbrella under which we have uh, multiple uh, projects uh, that cover different dimensions, different topics, or different scales. Uh, so one of the uh, big projects within our program, uh, within our unit, is the nurses program. I will talk a bit more about that uh, later because it, it covers uh, a lot of uh, the work and people within our unit. We also have uh, its partner of Ocean Canada, uh, which we work closely with other units such as uh, the uh, ship unit and fishery economics, as well as other colleagues in Canada. Uh, we, uh, we have projects that relate to cubic to ignore, which is focusing on small scale fisheries. Uh, most students are working on a new project really focusing on ocean applications. We also work with uh, NGOs such as uh, environmental defense firms, looking at, for example, uh, the uh, fisheries and ocean data in Mexico and how they respond to climate change. Um, we are engaging with other colleagues in UBC uh, through various funding schemes such as NSHA uh, strategic grant, uh, for example with uh, FGME's team as well as Philip's team and other colleagues are uh, working on looking at how uh, changes in the environment will affect climate protection and affect ecosystem dynamics. And then globally, we have various connections, such as uh, we're working with groups in Norway, uh, looking at uh, relationships with changing climate with coastal communities, as well as uh, colleagues in the UK and Stockholm looking at um, coastal management in, in Kenya um, and how that would benefit uh, well being of coastal communities. So, uh, just to talk a little bit more about the Nurses program, as I said, this contributes to a big component of our units. Um, UBC is um, the uh, head office, uh, or program office of the Nelson's program, which is an international research program now including 17 different international institutes. 
um, including the Plateau Print, uh, Cambridge, uh, uh, Stanford, uh, EH, Sweden, etc. Uh, we have uh, about 20 uh, physical investigators with now over 30 uh, different nurses fellows, PhD and postdoctoral uh, level. And in our home office, uh, we have uh, four uh, colleagues who are our in our support team. Um, they work on uh, the administration, so, uh, communication, and uh, IT uh, work. So, including for example, Pamukka, uh, Lindsay, who work on uh, communication, Pamukka is an administrative uh, assistant. Uh, Patrick work on IT and um, data state, and then Brida is an assistant to Lindsay working on communication aspect. And uh, so the the uh, this is the whole team. Um, we will be talking about the different dimensions of research data by uh, introduced by different uh, members of our team. And uh, basically, the, after this, um, the, the, there will be three components that we talk about: the body ecology, and then we talk about the social economic components, and finally the policy components. And we will be presented by. Uh, one member for each of the components. So I will pass it to the chairs. So first component of our research is core ecology. And the core ecology mission is to look at how marine ecosystems will respond to a changing ocean. Now, in order to do this, we need to develop a thorough and understanding of how uh, marine ecosystem structure and function. So in doing so, we have evaluated many different types of ecosystems across the world, uh, from coastal to offshore ecosystems, from tropical to polar ecosystems, as well as um, epipelagic to deep sea ecosystems. Now to understand how these ecosystems respond to oceanographic process, we need to first understand those physical processes that shape communities and define species composition and biogeography. So in order to do that, we need to understand oceanographic processes such as El Nino, uh, anti-Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, as well as uh, seasonal sea ice dynamics. So only then can we put these two abiotic and biotic fundamental concepts together and develop a thorough understanding to quantify how there will be structural, functional, and compositional changes um, with the changing oceans that are projected. So core ecology largely looks at the effects of changing oceans on different biological scales. So some of our research looks at mechanistic processes such as climate change effects on physiology, um, but other components of our research looks at large-scale changes in diversity. Ultimately, all of these biological effects will change the effects on the structure and dynamics of food webs, which has major implications for marine ecosystems, as well as the goods and services that we depend upon. So ecology in Koru focuses on many different scales, from local to global, as well as different temporal scales. Uh, we look at different historical trends as well as future projections and aggregate this data and look at trends at monthly, seasonal, and long-term temporal scales. We also look at different ecological scales from individual species to multiple ecosystems. Now much of our research on individual species focuses on exploited species, however, we do look at non-exploited species that are uh, ecologically important. So the foundation of much of this research is based off of uh, big open source data, and a lot of our abiotic data comes from governmental agencies such as NOAA and DFO. Our projection model data comes from international uh, collaboration projects such as IPCC's CNN5 project. And with these projections, we generally focus on the low climate change scenario and the high climate change scenario represented by RCP 2.6 and 8.5 there. So the biotic data that we derive and use for our modeling and uh, research work comes largely from websites, so see around this project, OBIS, FishBase, as well as uh, constructed biodiversity databases 
um, that are actually constructed by some of the researchers here in Nereus. We also use modeled output data from species distribution as well as uh, ecosystem, ecosystem models. Now to evaluate how changing oceans affects ecosystems, we use various statistical analyses across time and space to look at different trends. Um, we also use projection models uh, and we use species distribution models such as the dynamic bioclimate envelope model developed by William and other species distribution models developed by other researchers around the world. Uh, to evaluate ecosystem effects, we use um, ecosystem models such as Ecopath and Ecosim, uh, Medigny, and Numero. <coughs> so core ecology research generally falls into these three categories, and these lovely faces kind of comprise all of these three themes. So with the, with the first theme, um, biomass flow and production, the research here largely looks at how drivers of uh, oceanographic processes, drivers of species biomass, biomass production affects both exploited and not exploited species. So these drivers include temperature, oxygen, and primary production. So when we look at effects on not exploited species, we largely look at changes in abundance. Whereas when we look at changes to exploited species, we also look at changes to fisheries catch biomass. Further, we look at ecosystem effects and evaluate how changing oceans affects individual species or functional groups within trophic levels and how this affects the flow of energy through different uh, trophic levels with implications for free web structure. So our second theme is species distribution, diversity, and conservation. And much of this research looks at uh, the evaluation of past, present, and future distributions of marine species. Um, and this research has actually fed into the construction of a large biodiversity debate database to evaluate how um, climate change and future changes will affect species distributions. So then this component of our research actually also can feed into uh, research that looks at the implementation of conservation strategies and how it can actually mitigate climate change and human pressures and ensure a sustainable and healthy ecosystem into the future. So the last theme, marine ecology and ocean pollution, is largely spearheaded by one individual, Juan, and his research largely looks at how climate change interacts with uh, pollutants and toxins. So this specific research looks at how climate change affects the bioaccumulation of pollutants in uh, northeastern Pacific ecosystems. He looks at how the uptake of various toxins and pollutants at lower trophic levels bioaccumulates up to higher apex predators such as uh, killer whales. And so what he actually found was that with greater climate change indicated by this gold line here, um, climate change actually exacerbates the ex uptake of mercury bioaccumulation in southern resident killer whales. And this has major implications as this population, as we know, um, is largely vulnerable and extremely low population numbers and has been in decline for the last few decades. work that Chavez presented. Let's talk about some of the amazing work that CORU members are involved in in terms of the socioeconomic. So socioeconomic relates to fish and people, from the fisheries catch and the ecology in the bottom figure, to the fishing industry and fisheries in the center figure, to the people who eat and consume the seafood, the market in the top figure. And this picture is here to help you visualize that flow and that value chain. And what we want to emphasize, the essence of the research, is understanding at each of these different levels the social and the economic impact under a changing ocean with climate change. So what are the research topics we are trying to address? Well, it ranges from ecosystem services, fishing for food, culture, or recreational purposes, to food security, access, and equity. Is there a fair distribution of these resources? Now these are some pretty large scope topics, as you can imagine. 
So we're first going to delve in at the fisheries level and then the market level. I'm going to tell you a bit more about what research is happening <coughs> on these levels and which board members you should talk to to find out more. So first is the fisheries level. And within here, we've grouped our research into three components. First, the fisheries itself. And here are some of the core members doing research in this area. And this involves understanding fishing effort and catch, as well as price, cost, subsidies. We also want to understand sector dynamics. For example, small-scale fisheries have different characteristics than large-scale fisheries, both in terms of the way the fishery operates, the fishing catch and effort, but also in terms of the people, the community, how do they interact with the seafood? Which leads me to the second component, which is the people, the community. And this involves people who are both directly involved in the fishing industry for livelihoods and employment, but also people who depend on marine resources for food nutrition and security. We also want to understand governance and access to resources, and this can include uh, First Nations fisheries as well as in countries where there are protected areas. Finally, the third component of the research is marine culture and understanding its economic feasibility. What is important here to highlight is at the core of all this research is climate change and the changing oceans. How does climate change impact the fisheries? How does it impact the people? Is there going to be a shock to the system? What will that shock be? And then looking at the potential development of marine culture, in order to meet that contribution. This is also a great time to mention that we have research occurring across scales. We have members working on local issues, regional, as well as global. Well, let's take a step back and zoom out to the market level. And within here, we've grouped our research into two components. First is understanding patterns in seafood consumption. So this includes demographic dynamics, for example, indigenous communities, and also sector dynamics. So consuming seafood for tourism purposes would have different patterns than consuming seafood for subsistence purposes. So understanding these two components in terms of food nutrition and security, in terms of distribution efficiency, and also um, in terms of equity. Finally, when we understand this, we can then look at drivers of change. Both at the consumer level, what is the interaction between fish price and income? And also at the trade level, is there substitutability between local and foreign products? So, in summary of our socioeconomic research, we would like to share with you some uh, research questions that core members are currently addressing. And what we want to emphasize here is the interacting component uh, in a changing oceans. So, let's walk through an example, starting at ecology. So, one example is, how does climate change impact species distributions? And then we can link that to fishers. How will this change in species distribution then change fishers' catch? Will fishers be able to adapt to this? How will we see changes in their nutrition or their food security? And then linking to the fisheries level, will they have to change their fishing pattern or behavior? And in turn, how will the community react? Do they have, um, can they use traditional knowledge in order to adapt and uh, inform climate change adaptation plans and strategies? And a sum of all these effects would then impact the economy. And as you can see from the arrows from the economy, it feeds back to the different components, and so this is a dynamic uh, process and understanding all of this uh, in a changing oceans. What are our major outputs? So we've grouped it into four different categories here. The fisheries, the people, socio-economies, and marine culture. And within each of these different areas, some contributions in terms of databases, in terms of maps, reports, or assessments, significant findings uh, by past and present core room members that can then be used to inform policy. And with that, policy? Policy. <laughs> I'll be fast, don't worry. Um, so the idea is that we take all of that awesome nerdy <laughs> physics and biological aspect that we all like here and we couple it with the extremely complex and different multidimensional uh, social economic uh, dimension of people who uses all these resources and then 
we don't stop there because why should we stop? And then we go and say, okay, so why will this uh, actually, uh, why would it, what can we do to actually implement policies that uh, will help us kind of address what we are researching? And how can we actually use all research to improve uh, people's livelihood and not just to just like the research and publish it? Uh, so basically we have uh, core two main, or the way we divided these sections two main ways. So one of them is the actual research on policy and bringing up policy centers, uh, analyzing implemented policy on climate change and fisheries, etc. And another one is actually working directly with policymakers or with uh, institutions on the ground that have the potential to actually change uh, policy, to actually inform them about uh, these changes and these um, topics that we are doing research. Um, so I'm going to give two very uh, broad examples. And as both uh, Travis and Mel Melanie said, we work both at the global and regional levels. So for example, um, this is a work on seafood consumption. and. In, um, indigenous people, that was a global assessment around the world, and many, and not only core members were part of this, but also uh, other researchers. But we also do uh, things at a more local level, as could be uh, directly to a country or a region. So this is basically uh, following uh, maybe the trend that Melanie was saying about changes in ecology changes and fish catch and how that would change life of the of uh, a local community, and then what policies uh, could we implement, or what, or how the policies are implemented now will um, kind of behave on this change. So this type of work is made um, by the following people. <laughs> <laughs> um, the idea of the basis here is that if you're interested in any of these topics, well, you can just go and chat with the person. Um, another example is looking, for example, at how the species distribution are going to change from one country to another. So uh, transboundary fisheries management. And again, we can go from a global example of looking at the whole world to a more regional specific example in which we said, OK, for these two or three countries, what's actually going to happen? What are the current policies implemented? are going to do and what could we um, see in the future as working for them. And then part of the more applied and still very global assessment is for those who have Gerald's talk like what, a few weeks ago or something. Um, you'll be familiar with this picture, but we also look at how the sustainable development goals are going to be Led the relationship with especially the goal number 14, which is uh, life on the water. And that is part of like the very, very uh, policy direct uh, research that we do. And I unfortunately don't have time to go through all the examples of the research that we do. So, what we did is a beautiful world map. And basically, what we're seeing here, and we would like to share with all of you, is if you're interested in a region, for example, in an ocean or uh, I don't know, North America, Galapagos, etc., if you're interested in that area, if your research is focused in that area and you want to uh, see more about the policy implications, etc., you can contact any of these spaces and talk about it. Um, these are one of the countries where uh, some of the countries where our research is being done uh, related to policy. Uh, as William said, our work is also, uh, we partner with different type of institutions, international institutions, NGOs, uh, government. So, so yeah, this is kind of uh, to show you that. And not only regional, but we are also um, on the global, global axis. Right? So uh, both Vicky and Dez, William, Lai Mohammed, and they're all our different, have different projects, uh, global scale. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can also uh, talk to them. And I guess, William, we go back to you. So, um, 
the diversity of work and different political scales and domains of our work uh, really try to uh, connect to um, policies as well as to help inform uh, people at different uh, regions as well as scales uh, to, to, to think about uh, ocean sensitivity and maybe inform also uh, the action that they can, can take uh, to achieve ocean sustainability. And we do that by a variety of different outreach uh, work. So at a uh, uh, scale that are related directly to our research, uh, we uh, try to complicate our work through uh, press release, uh, working with the media uh, in various forms to communicate our science, our latest science to the public. We also uh, involve specific policy discussions. So for example, um, we work with our colleagues um, to put new policy beef to inform the discussions about our diversity beyond national issues jurisdiction, particularly how climate change will play a role in that. Um, we also work in more formal science policy um, forum and assessments such as the IPCC, where again, through this formal process, we provide our science and effort to try to uh, inform our international um, and regional uh, policy discussion. So at the end, I think uh, I would like to thank embodies of our teams to put together this effort, uh, this presentation that is a really joint uh, effort, and I think uh, thank um, Jordan and Brett for providing us to have these opportunities to work together. Um, I think this is actually a really good initiative for, for, for something that we can collaborate with together within the group and then also link to other people in IOM. Also, um, I hope this presentation provides you with some basic understanding on the kind of work that we do, the kind of resources uh, that we generate from our uh, research. And um, we uh, uh, actively uh, seek and welcome uh, collaborative collaboration. I think uh, could provide a, an umbrella uh, on, uh, on various aspects and projects uh, to achieve our missions and goals. And uh, we think that this leads uh, to a collaborative work. It cannot just be done within our group. So um, I hope that uh, we will continuously develop more ideas and collaboration with other in Iowa. Thank you very much.